In September 2022, a group of 12 climbers attempted to conquer the highest active volcano in Eurasia. Despite facing treacherous weather conditions and a challenging route, the climbers and their guide headed for the summit. Little did they know, the summit would soon become the least of their worries as tragedy struck on the way up. This is the story of the Klutchevskaya Sopka disaster. Klutchevskaya Sopka volcano is the highest active volcano in Eurasia and one of the highest active volcanoes in the world. It has an altitude of 4,750 meters, which is higher than Mount Everest, measured from sea level. It is characterized by a steep and symmetrical cone that offers picturesque views from all sides. This volcano is no unknown. It has erupted regularly since 1697. Over the years, there have been more than 100 eruptions, some of them very large and destructive. The most recent eruption occurred in 2020-2021, when it dispersed ash clouds up to 6 kilometers high. The weather conditions on this volcano are also a force to be reckoned with. The temperature can drop to minus 40 degrees Celsius in winter, and rarely rises above 0 degrees Celsius in summer. In addition, the volcano experiences strong winds and storms that can make climbing very dangerous. In addition, the weather can also be affected by volcanic activity. The volcanic eruption releases ash and gas into the air that can reduce visibility and cause dangerous flying conditions. The ash can also coat the snow and ice on the mountain, changing its temperature and texture. Despite these conditions, climbers regularly attempt to conquer the summit of this volcano. What makes this climb even more dangerous is the treacherous route required to reach the summit. The Kluchevskaya Sopka volcano poses a challenge to mountaineers because of its high altitude. The route starts at an altitude of about 800 meters and leads to an altitude of nearly 5,000 meters. A group of 12 climbers decided to conquer the challenging summit of Kluchevskaya Sopka. The group of climbers consisted of 10 hikers and two guides, Ivan Alabugin and Andrei Mashenko. Interest in this expedition began with an advertisement from the Extreme Time Travel Club in Novosibirsk. The organization offered an unusual program, an ascent of one of the most dangerous volcanoes in Kamchatka, Kluchevskaya Sopka. The price of the trip ranged from 72 to 80,000 rubles, and their website was full of photos and descriptions of their guides, intended to convince potential customers of their professionalism. Andrei Mashenko was the type of guide when he spoke, everyone listened. His stories made you fall in love with the mountains and occasionally gave you food for thought. Andre first traveled to the mountains in 2001 during his military service in the Caucasus, and later they became an important part of his life. He worked as a guide and mountaineering instructor for more than five years, organizing treks in the Altai region. Ivan Alabugin was another guide from their team. He had worked for them for more than eight years and was an experienced instructor for mountaineering programs. Ivan had led successful beluga traverses for commercial groups. A beluga traverse is a climbing route on the Kamchatka Peninsula in the far east of Russia, where there are several active and sleeping volcanoes, including Kluchevskaya Sopka. The beluga traverse typically involves conquering several peaks in the area, including some of the highest volcanoes in the region, such as Kluchevskaya Sopka, Kamen, and Bezimiani. Ivan also led treks of varying difficulty in Nepal, Turkey, Crimea, and around Lake Baikal. The volcano hike advertisement attracted adventure seekers from across the whole country. From Moscow to Novosibirsk, as well as Vladimir Kamchatka Altai and Primoria regions. The team had not hiked together before. The climbers met for the first time at the base of the volcano. When mountaineers plan to conquer treacherous peaks, they prefer to go with their friends. When conditions become life-threatening, you need to know you can trust your partner with your life. Close groups and close friends also tend to perform their climbs more easily because they have a matched climbing temperament. These factors were all missing from this team, which should have already set off alarm bells. They were all on their way to the summit when the weather conditions turned terribly bad. Snow and volcanic ash began to obstruct their path and visibility became worse. At that point, three of the twelve people decided to return. Two of them, Anastasia Usachiova and Roman Avarin, suffered from mountain sickness and felt unable to climb to the summit. Together with their guide, Ivan Alabugin, the three climbers decided to retreat to a volcanologist's hut, located at 3,300 meters altitude. This created two groups among the climbers. The first group of eight climbers and their guide, Andrei Mashenko, headed for the summit. The second group with their guide, Ivan Alabugin, headed to the volcanologist's hut to spend the night. Finding shelter in these terrible conditions was a must, 
for the guide knew it was impossible for them to survive the strong night winds in this weather. Little did they know, however, that the volcanologist's hut would soon become the only thing standing between them and death. The other group, with their guide, left to climb the summit and fuel their adrenaline rush. A few hours later came terribly bad news. Ivan received a radio call from Andre that six of the nine climbers on their way to the summit had fallen into a crevasse at 4,200 meters and died on the spot. They landed on rocks some 30 meters down. The other three were in bad shape. Upon hearing of this horrific accident, Ivan immediately set out to find the three survivors at the summit. He took tents, sleeping bags, and supplies with him. He needed to rescue his teammates. He called the Russian rescue authorities and asked for immediate support. Despite the poor signals, rescuers were able to understand that six people had fallen into a crevasse just below the summit and died on the spot. Guide Andrei Mashenko had broken his leg, and two other participants were also seriously injured. The situation was critical, and further complicated by the fact that the climbers had arrived at the summit just before a blizzard broke out. This prevented helicopters from reaching them, and significantly reduced their chances of rescue. Strong winds prevented helicopters from entering the airspace above the volcano, while rescue workers reaching the area on foot were hampered by snow and volcanic ash. Despite these obstacles, rescuers managed to set up a camp at an altitude of 1,400 meters. The ill-fated group of nine climbers, six of whom passed away, were still just below the summit. Rescue workers would need at least two more days to reach them, a helicopter sent several more rescuers at 1,600 meters, and they too began their way to the summit. Ivan Alabugin, despite several obstacles, managed to reach his wounded comrades. He decided to stay with them and give them first aid, but this was in vain. Ivan, seeing the condition of his injured friends, began to prepare for the worst. Night fell and the storm had not subsided. Meanwhile, it had stopped snowing, but unfortunately for two climbers, it was all too late. This brought the death toll to eight. Soon after, Andrei Mashenko passed away succumbing to his injuries. Unfortunately, all the climbers of the first group had perished, along with their guide. Only after Mashenko's passing did Ivan decide to return to the volcanologist's hut. He was the only survivor and realized there was no point in staying below the summit. He had to save himself. Waiting for him at the hut were two climbers with whom he had initially started the descent together. They were waiting for the rescue team. The rescuers said in those days, At the moment, search and rescue operation is being complicated by several factors. Weather conditions, wind speeds up to 15 meters per second, snowfall expected in the next few hours, ash clouds on slopes, rock falls as well as ice fields on the way that can only be scaled using crampons and ice axes. Due to these harsh conditions, the rescue team did not reach the volcanologist's hut until September 6, three days after Yvonne called the rescue service. There they found three psychologically broken people. Two were otherwise physically healthy, while Ivan suffered frozen hands, feet, and face during his attempt to rescue the stranded people near the summit. The survivors were quickly retrieved from the mountain, but the bodies of the victims were not evacuated until the next day because they were difficult to reach. Several mistakes were made that led to this disaster. First of all, the climb was rushed. The team of 10 climbers had bought cheap tickets for September 9th and wanted to be back home by then. In doing so, they ignored the signs of altitude sickness in two of their teammates and insisted on keeping up with the rest. They didn't give themselves enough time to acclimate to the thin air and cold. Another mistake made was that the number of guides was reduced. At one point, one of the guides was left behind with the two sick climbers, leaving only one guide for the remaining eight who were determined to reach the summit. The most fatal mistake was that they climbed rope as a team without security. They tied themselves with a rope that was not attached to anything. They thought it would keep them safe in case of a fall, but it did the opposite. When one of them slipped on a patch of ice, he dragged down everyone else with him. They tumbled down the steep slope, hitting rocks and ice along the way. They got tangled in their own rope and couldn't stop their fall. It was a horrific sight. But this accident is not only due to the inexperience and fault of the climbers. Investigative reports suggest that the company that was involved in providing the guides and other arrangements is also responsible. They arrested Andrei Stupanov, the head of Extreme Time, the company that organized the expedition. They searched his offices and took him into custody for two months. The second guide, Ivan Alabugin, was also charged with manslaughter.
Although he went back to rescue his other teammates, the investigation blames him for allowing the climbers to rush the expedition, splitting the group in two, and climbing without proper acclimatization. Police and investigators were also eager to know what else went wrong on that fateful day. How had the guides prepared for their climb? Did they follow all the safety rules? Did they have enough experience and qualifications? Some experts doubted that. Alexander Odintsov, a former Soviet and Russian mountaineering champion who had climbed 36 of the world's most difficult peaks, accused the guide of tying the tourists together without any security. He said this was a fatal mistake. Moreover, he said that in a team with a rope, any risk was multiplied by nine. According to him, anyone could slip on the icy slopes of Kluchevskaya in September and drag everyone else down with them. In addition, he said that for inexperienced climbers, such rope work was a crime. Some members of the mountaineering community had reservations about the arrest of the second guide, Ivan. They believed that it is just a way to deflect blame from the tour company and that the guide did what he was supposed to do. These critics felt that the tour company should be banned for sending only two guides for this expedition. Both guides had years of experience climbing these areas. Andrei Mashenko, one of the deceased climbers, had climbed the volcano more than 10 times. Few local guides have accomplished such a feat. Several experienced hikers disagreed with the criminal case against the guides and the head of the company. They believed that sending them to jail will neither help anyone nor prevent future mountaineering disasters. The legislation itself should change. Another climber from Nazir Sabir's famous team, who conquered Everest, thought it was most likely the rope work that led to the disaster. When someone on a team begins to fall, the other members must act quickly and slam their ice picks into the ice or snow to stop the fall. However, this procedure varies depending on the climbing surface. One could only imagine how Ivan felt as his teammates passed away one after another before his eyes, a memory that will haunt him longer than a judicial sentence ever could. Both men were awaiting trial, the director of the company was in custody, and the guide was under house arrest, while the Kamchatka government was working on proposals for systemic regulations regarding extreme tourism at the national level. This sad event shocked the mountaineering world. Calls were made to tighten safety standards for hikers, and the climbing community expected a transparent investigation and action following this disaster. Thanks for watching this story. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and turn on your notification bell to stay updated on more similar videos. We would love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share your comments below. Until next time!